Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the bench. Today, we're going to be going over all the tools and supplies and equipment that I use on a weekly basis, almost daily basis. I get a lot of calls. I shouldn't say calls, emails and uh, questions. Um, hey, where do I get these droppers? Hey, hey, where did you get that sh that paint shaker? Where did you get that? Uh, what? And I get it a lot. I write back, and then they ask for a link because they're trying to get the exact one for whatever reason. I want the exact one. But... Uh, I figured I'd gather everything up and put this video out to show you items that I use on a, I would say, daily basis. Some of these stuff are weekly, um, at least once a week. But uh, it's not everything that's sitting here. I got more stuff off to the side here, so we're going to go over this. Uh, not in great detail, but we're going to go through what I use uh, every day. Now, the basic to start with is a box knife, box cutter. Because I get a lot of packages, as you can tell, from paints and everything that shows up here. Do not use, let me reach over, do not use your hobby knife. Because you're going to go through these blades, which aren't, you know, they're not expensive, but why, why go through them? Get a, a box cutter just for opening packages and uh, leave your hobby knife for the hobby itself. And uh, as we go forward here, I'm not going to go over things like... An X-Acto knife or whatever blades I use. Uh, there's no; uh, th those are the basic, super basics. I'm showing you the uh, the the uh, little things that I use. I mean, we obviously we use that and tweezers. I have tweezers up here. You know, tweezer is a tweezer, but I actually don't use a tweezer every day. I do use that knife though because there's a box showing up every day. Uh, the next big thing on my list is these cups. These cups are just phenomenal, and I'm going to show you why. These are the first cups I bought. All right. Now these cups have the measurements. They both have the measurements. These are a little nicer because they're clearer, but still, you see the paint through them anyway. Um, here's the problem with these. Let me get a stick, which is coming up next. When you go to stir the paint, now I can use a paint stirrer, and I can use my paint stirrer here, the ones I just got. We're going to go show them, too. That's coming up. But to jump ahead, uh, a lot of times I would just take a paint stick and stir up quick my paint that I'm mixing. I'm not a big guy who mixes them uh, in the cup of the airbrush. A lot of guys will pour the paint and everything in and then blend it here. I just don't do that. Um, I like to see the paint pour against the side as I'm doing it. Uh, I probably could do it either way, but I've gotten used to mixing them in the cups. That's why I use cups. But these, and these are abundantly out there. I've gotten complaints from guys when they saw mine, because I know you guys went through the same thing. They got these nubs in the bottom. I think it helps with stacking. Can you see them right there? Huh? There's one here. There's four of them, by the way. Here. See it? Here. And here's what happens. You put the paint, you put the thinner, and the stupid stick hits it, and the paint goes flying. All right? Oh, I just broke it trying to show you guys. But you can hear it, right? See it sticking to it? And the second it does it once, the bench is covered. I did it once and quit. I went and got, uh, I went and grabbed old uh, Dixie cups, but these are way too big because I wasn't, you know, when I'm doing a spoon test and whatnot for you guys, I'm not mixing that much. And this was a waste, these giant cups. Now, these aren't bad. You get them at the dollar store, and they do come in handy. I've been mixing some resin. I've been using those. But these are the perfect cup. Smooth, circle bottom. There's nothing on the bottom. How's that? Beautiful. I love these cups. Let's go back to this. My God, I broke it again. So there you go. Can you see it? It's a perfect circle. I'll put the link below because these are the cups you want, and there's a lot out there that aren't these. It's got to be these cups. There's no special brand on them. I just locked in on them, and I put them on a renewal basis, and I just get them almost quarterly. I'll show you how they come. They come in a giant pack. There you go. Coming like three sleeves of these. So there we go. Deal Med medicine cups. School nurse, whatever, you know, they're telling you what it's good for. <laughs> it's good for us, right? So there you go. That's the my uh one of my most important uh items I use daily is those cups. Alright? Now we'll jump to the paint stirrers. Now these is how they come. Back the back. The bag was actually way full in that, but I'll grab one back here, like I showed you. And uh, what I like to do with these is I like to we'll jump ahead to my nipper that I use every day. And uh, when I take them and I just cut them in half because it fits the cup perfect. So, yeah. 
so I'm doubling up. So if I get a thousand, I got two thousand. If you get like, you know, two thousand of them, you're getting four thousand, and they last a long time. I've had these almost a year now. So, uh, yeah, these wooden sticks. Now, there's some that I've, I've ordered and didn't like. They have a flat bottom. I'm not big with this flat bottom. I don't know why. I like this rounded bottom. But you can't get the flat bottom, but it ends up getting a little frayed. Can you see it? And sometimes you get a wood chip coming off. The rounded ends, I have never had a problem with. So I go with these rounded coffee stirs. They're called coffee stirs, by the way, not paint stirs. So, um... These are the ones I've been using for quite a long time, as long as I've had the channel, for sure. And uh, now, an alternative to my cups, I use these weekly also. Depends what I'm mixing. But these are awesome. These little tin cups are great. And uh, they clean up good. I especially like to use these with uh, an acrylic, because I just run them under the sink and they're clean, versus using a solvent to clean it off. And of course, these, will, uh, these have no nubs either. And you pour them right in. I have some that have a little pour spout, but I don't know where those are. I wish I could find them. They're on here somewhere. There's all kinds. There's all knockoffs. There's tons of these things. But they do come in handy. And they're cheap. And you use them forever. And uh, I use those all the time, too. I use them behind the scenes quite a bit. All right. Let's move on. We're going to move the spoons because that's an obvious one here. But what's coming up? These eyedroppers are fantastic. Now, um, I have glass ones that I use all the time. Those are off to the side here. But uh, I use these more than that. I, I love these things. And uh, I'll keep them marked in bins that say lacquer and ones that will say acrylic. So I can keep reusing them, clean them out, air dry them, and put them right back in. If I use it with paint, I might not reuse it or I soak them in a little jar that I have full of the solvent that matches it. But I get so many in bulk that um, you can just recycle them. But I, that's only when I use them on paint. Most of the time I'll pour the paint out of the jar. But sometimes I want to get a few drops. I will use this. And these are marked off, which is awesome too for... Uh, marking specific measurements but let me show you how these come I get these per I think hundreds two hundreds five hundred this is three hundred three hundred all right I don't even think this is eight bucks it might be eight ninety nine seven ninety nine worth its weight in gold you you can't do better a better eight bucks purchase than this and I've had this quite a bit uh, probably in the spring and I still got this many left you know, and that's when I use, like I said, I reuse them quite a bit. But if I use them in paint and it ends up getting sticky, I'll, I'll toss them. I'll put them in my recycle. Isn't that great? About 8 bucks for 300 of these things. Again, I will have links below for all these. Let me put that down over there. Those are my favorites. All right, spoons. I get these at my local deli. You can get them anywhere. Um, I get these black spoons on Amazon. I'll put a link for these. And these come in handy if I want to check quickly when a paint comes in before I'm about to start testing. And uh, when I say a paint, because there's certain stuff, like maybe a, a chrome here, here's a uh, green stuff world, stuff that needs to be on a black base or uh, maybe an all-clad type of paint. And I'll just do that on there quick, which is great. I don't have to spray a black base. And most of the time, I will spray it anyway. And these I get from a deli. There's a soup spoon, teaspoon. There's all kinds. And um, if you have trouble with paint sticking on it, I will clean them with an alcohol or I will get my pad. I got these at the uh, uh, auto supply store. And it's not quite sandpaper, but it is sandpaper. And you rub it across, and then paint will stick better, and it actually will remove any of that uh, oils or whatever that is repelling your paint. All right? You do want to wipe this off when you're done. So I'll wipe it on my shirt for now. But you can see the dullness already. See how shiny that is? See it? We dulled it right up. And I get these by the thousand. My uh, local deli, which is not even a half mile away. Um, I call it a deli, but he's a... Uh, He's like he's a diner. I'll call it a diner. You know, American chop suey and meatloaf and uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, he's I've been going there for about thirty years, and uh, I know Tony well. And I say, Tony, I need these spoons. And he started getting me bulk spoons. He gets them at the supply store once a week, and he started getting them for me. So check that out. So like fifteen bucks for a case of a thousand. I don't think you guys are going to need a thousand like I do, but uh, those are the spoons that I use. All right, let's go on to these. Why don't we do these in order? These are dental sticks. Now, these dental sticks are, uh, they have a name. This is G-U-M. I think there's a period. See it? Gum. And uh, different color means different size. You can see the bulk pack here is red, and the green is really tiny. See that? I use these for my airbrush cleaning. And, oh, let's see. This is my biggest. Yeah, look at that one. That's good. That would clean out a nozzle of an airbrush. If you want to pull off the nozzle, you can go in through the front a little bit. 
you can actually bend this one and it goes right in here into the front or into the back and you be surprised you'll pull some paint out a lot of the times and uh, I use these every day um, I buy them in bulk but I end up using them over and over again because you're really putting it in through thinner and you wipe them off they stay clean this one's probably been used probably three months look at it it's still great so uh, buy a package of all different sizes and you are good to go these things are fantastic uh, a must-have again I use them every day now let's put this cap on here don't really need a cap now to go along with that let's jump ahead to the uh, cotton swabs that I use now these are gun cleaning swabs I mean you can use them for anything but I think they came up classified as gun cleaning for guys who clean their guns and uh, these are really tight woven see that and uh, they never fray and each side is different you got a rounded end and you got the pointed end again you can go into deep spots into the airbrush and I will actually grab my airbrush again when the needle is out I will uh, point her in and twist around in here and on, on the bottom you'll end up with some paint let me show you like right there and you can get it right there and just get it right out without having to go but having to do it a deep clean you know and um, these are fantastic now these I've been using for at least five years I love these things once I once I found the brand I like I locked it in these are cheap too these are probably a little bit more in the $13 range but you get two plastic containers that lock you can actually use the container as a storage case that's how nice the container is that they come in and um, these are a must-have uh, these are fantastic you can even go into the front here when you're done and each shape depends on your airbrush will fit perfect I love these things and um, yeah these these are all uh, these few first things I'm showing you are absolute must-haves and uh, I've shown a few videos with these but uh, I had to include them in the video because I use them every day um, I use this Tamiya tape. I'll well grab it. I love this Tamiya tape. I use it to test a lot of paints, the peel test. You see me, I'll put paint uh, tape on a paint test. We'll peel off. If the paint doesn't come off, it's good. It's really good. It sticks well. You can airbrush over it, but it never takes the paint off. And uh, it's easy to dispense. You pull it out. It cuts beautifully every time. And check this out. When you run out, just grab it here. And they sell it, the spare like almost half the price of when you buy the whole container and I haven't gone through this you can see the big ones I got back there there's other brands back there too but to me it's the easy one for me to get it's it's at every store practically I go to and uh, they come in different sizes and shapes and uh, yeah I use this constantly it's a great great product it's inexpensive and it just works to me a masking tape with 18 millimeter they have all kinds of sizes of course that one's huge back down there you can see that one so uh, yeah this masking tape is a must own now back to paint stirring. All right, I showed these. <coughs> excuse me, guys, coming off a cold here. Um, I showed these recently, and these are really awesome. These are aluminum. These are made by Hobby Mio. It comes two in a pack. Was the other one? Here it is. There we go. And beautiful. I love them. It's got this rounded end, and uh, they're light. They're sturdy. You can't bend it at all, and uh, they clean off great. You just dip it. I keep a, a like a, a shot glass. Let me see if I got my shot glass here. I keep a little glass jar, and I'll dip it in. And uh, no, I can't find it. I'll have a couple. Of, I just put some acetone or something in hand. It wipes right off, and it comes off really easy too. These are great. Got these at Robot Kai. I'll put a link for these below. But these are like four dollars, five bucks, and again, use them forever. And um, I discovered these a little late. I've been using these for a long time. I probably when I run out of these, I'll jump onto these and just use them constantly. But then again, you are you got it's another step. You gotta dip it in some acetone or thinner. You gotta get a paper towel. You know, let me grab a paper towel. You gotta grab a paper towel, clean it off. Whereas these, you can just stir them and toss them. So I mean, it is an extra step, but uh, they are great to have. And this is my powered mixer, and I have two of these. One from Badger. And this one's from Micromark. And I like the Micromark better because this one, you turn it on and you pour in, but there's no ease on and off. I was doing this in the cup and I would hold my finger so I could control it. But then I would have to let go of it to turn it off. This one, it's a lever. See it? So now when I'm in, I can put her in, 
and then take it out. I don't have to worry about uh, using my two hands to, uh, to let go and to shut it off. So I discovered this one a little later, but it is the better product. Uses a couple of AA batteries right in here. Fantastic. You can take this off if you need to clean it, but the same thing. Dip it in some uh, acetone or some thinner. Blast it in a nice spin. It comes out clean. You barely even have to wipe it. This thing is awesome. Now, I also use every day both of my paint mixers. Let's jump to the paint mixer. I use my four E's here. Let's put it on. On off. I use this every day. No need to really show you guys in grave detail here, but uh, let's, uh, let me grab my new paint here. Yes, the new Vallejo Game Air, new formula. This test is coming up, and boy, early tests prove this is great. But anyway, I use this every day. I can hear it mixing already, and uh, there it is. We are ready to go. I don't have to shake. And a lot of times, just shaking doesn't do it enough because you really can't compete with these mad RPMs here. And for the bigger jars and sometimes spray cans, uh, this is heavy, so give me a second, guys. I use the Typhoon one from uh, Typhoon Paint Racks, Robert Kennedy, my buddy. And uh, we'll do the same thing. But as a bonus, I could put bigger jars. Here is my uh, 2K Satin Clear. Right? See them? Look at that. And then uh, flip it over. And it's done. We are totally blended. Look at that. And the other good thing about the uh, bigger Typhoon, I do a lot of spray cans. I do a lot of spray can primer. And you can hear the marble in there. And it really gets the job done. Believe it or not, it comes out beautiful. So, uh, yeah, those are the two I use all the time. If I'm mixing in a jar, of course, let me grab this. I use the little handheld right there. But the, that Typhoon or the 4E's, both highly recommended. You can see a little uh, recharging port. You can plug your phone in on your bench if you're going to uh, be sitting there for a while. You want to listen to tunes or something or watch a Barbatos while you're at your bench. You can keep your phone charged up right there. All right. Let us move on. Let's get our little cup out of here. All right. All right. What do we got next? Let me see what I'm going to stand. I use these particular nippers every day. This is from Bandai. This is their uh, Bandai Spirits. Here it is. It build up nipper. I use this to cut off of the runner and then I go in with the finer one. I don't have to go into details here. Again, this is like tweezers. I use my god hands to get close. Obviously, you saw my test, but I do use these every day. I wanted to show you, you know, um, I was contemplating showing you because I don't need to show you the exacto knife or any of that stuff because I use it every day. But this is the one I happen to use this every day. Matter of fact, you saw me cut these uh, paint stirrers in half. I use this one, you know, because I want to ruin the high end one. So I just come in and I cut them off and I get a bunch ready to go I end up using this but I do like this one uh, I don't know why I think I got it cheap <laughs> I think that's why but uh, yeah I use those every day and this paint strainer has come in handy particularly on some uh, acrylics I've been using it it came out a little chunky um, this fits in any airbrush right there you can pour it directly in you can do it twice now I can pour the paint when I mix is usually what I will do in here all right, and then once I got it strained and mixed, I will put this here and pour it back in here. I do this a lot of times off camera. You guys don't see me because then I got to take this off. I put it in the, a jar of thinner because you got to keep it clean. And um, but it's easy. It stays pretty clean, and um, it really gets a job done. You really see a lot of little stuff in there that would end up clogging your airbrush. So a cheap little item like this will save you for sure. Now, I use uh, these gloves. I discovered these recently, and uh, you don't see me use them on camera too much because sometimes I can't control the camera uh, with the glove on. But, uh, uh, and I got to go back and forth, back and forth doing stuff when I'm doing a, a video. But behind the scenes, when I get all these spoons you see done, I'm wearing these gloves. And uh, these are good. I like to buy a size smaller than uh, what would fit me. You can see I got someone, uh, my wife Judy was in the hospital. I snuck a few out, we'll say. But yeah, these are awesome and um, really worth it. You get them cheap, under 20 bucks for a box of 100. I can actually get them to last quite a long time. They fit beautiful. Um, I like to go a size small. I got big hands, but I actually do like to go a size smaller so I can actually pick things up. 
and work with stuff a little more detailed than having a, a, a glove that's on me. It's all floppy. So, uh, I, I, these are Schneiders. Yeah, I, I've liked these for a while now. I'm going to put a link below for these two. Uh, just be sure you get a size that you guys are comfortable with. I personally go a size less than my normal hand size because I like them to fit tight. All right. All right, we're going to go in with my glasses. This is a little basic here, but I got this unit. Let me show you. I got another one here. I got this unit at the dollar store, and I got these numbers at the, at the dollar store. I think the little stickers. And you can see my other stickers up there, A, B, C. That's where I put the runners when I build a kit. It goes all the way up. See it? So I took them from that, and I put them on here. And that's strength of the magnification. I'm wearing a one right now. Here, I'll take them off my head. You guys can see. That's what I'm wearing. I don't wear them when I talk or go out or anything, but when I'm reading or doing something um, with the phone or with the computer, I, I use the reading glasses. And these are threes. These are up close. When I panel line or if I'm cleaning off nub marks, I switch to these. And again, these are at the dollar store. Buck, buck change. I get a whole bunch of them, and as they wear out, because they break, I just replace them. And uh, get yourself one of these things, same store, and there you go. You just fill it up. Matter of fact, you can see in the background, that's where I got some of my box cutters. That's where I keep the uh, paint stirrers. And this, this, these little things come in really handy. They uh, take up very little space on the desk, but they hold quite a bit. And that's what you're looking for, something really efficient like that. Let me get that out of the way. All right, you see this in the background. I use this every day. This is a humidity meter. And I have one in the booth, one here. That's the temperature in the house, 71, and that is the humidity, 65%, which is perfect. You'll get a smiley face. Matter of fact, here you go, you see it? Smiley face, meaning you're good to go. COM means comfortable, uh, but that's good for airbrushing. Hold on. This is my high-end one. This is my fancy schmancy one. And uh, you can see it's probably raining outside. I've been down here. I don't know. Uh, it's 70 in the house, 67, this says, for uh, humidity. Close to that one. Oh, oh, that one says 67 now, too. Sometimes when you're talking and your breath actually will change the uh, humidity. Outside, 90. So, yeah, it is definitely started raining. It's 64 outside, 70 in the house. So, 90 outside. It comes with a sensor that I put in my backyard. I'm pointing up because the window to the backyard is right there. And... Um, that's on, and that's how I know what the temp is. You know, I mean, you can tell it's raining by looking outside, but the humidity, to know the humidity is awesome inside and outside. And it's going way up, you know, because it reads, I'm actually talking. If I stop for a second, it'll probably go down. Let's see. No, it's not moving. It's stuck. But, uh, yeah, see, it's at 62. I think the sensor is on the back. Yeah, all these are sensors back here from what I've read. And you can change all the settings. I have it plugged in. You can have it so it's not plugged in, and you touch it right here. And then you can set the, the dimmer if you want it. There you go. See, I'm not talking as much, and it's going down a little bit. Let me get this out of the way. But I do use that every day. It's on the corner of the desk right over here. All right. Let me show you another thing that I use every day. This thinner from Mr. Hobby. It is a mild lacquer thinner. And uh, I love this stuff. I use it every single day. Not stuff you would get at, let me grab it, at the hardware store. This is a little too harsh. All right, but I use this to clean my airbrushes. So I'm not using the expensive stuff to clean an airbrush. I use the clean strip. And uh, this I get at Lowe's or Home Depot, whichever store I happen to be near. And uh, Walmart actually carries it too. Let me show you the acetone. I use this every single day. Let me show you something. I did a whole video on this, so there's no need to go over details, but I do use Mr. Leveling Thinner every day. Check this out. These I use every day. I got these at the craft store. And again, the letters that I used here, in numbers you saw up there, I just showed you. I spelled the word acetone and lacquer. And I fill them up, you know, not a lot, because if you forget it open, it evaporates and you, it's gone. It evaporates quick. But these hold it really well. These seal up. Excellent. And just go to Walmart or a craft store. You can get these type of jars. And I like them because they were low. I didn't want to get a mason jar that I had to keep screwing and unscrewing. So this uh, quick release jar type is awesome. And then we go, like I said, when I'm cleaning the airbrush, I'll grab it in. I'll lacquer thinner from using lacquer. I like the flash acetone at the very end just to shot through because it dries so fast. 
It's just a process I learned from a local painter and my dad who was a spray painter his entire life. It's just a process that I was taught, so I keep going with it, and so far, everything's worked out fine. So there you go. Take any, go get your jars, label them like I do, put your two in there like I do, clean out with lacquer, flash off at the end with acetone, you're good to go, everything looks brand new, just like you saw. There, all right, let me show you what else we have here. We have airbrush stands, okay. Now, this one is in the booth. It's freewheeling. I can move it anywhere. It holds anything, including ones with MAC valves. And um, let's see if it holds the trigger types. Yep. Barely, though. But it'll hold it. Now, I'm going to show you my recent acquirement. Because I've been using the trigger airbrush a lot lately. And, hold on. And my own personal airbrush is coming out soon. And it's a trigger type. So, uh, I'm going to show you what I've been using. I just got this in fairly recently. This is made by Iwata. High, high quality, really good stuff. Nothing plastic on here but this knob. This is all steel. It fits on the bench. Great. I'll show it in the next video when I do an airbrush test. I mean, a paint test. But you can adjust these any way you want them. But you can actually pull these apart, this metal. So you can adjust it so it fits whatever airbrush you're using. And check this out. This is how it holds it. It just goes on a nice, simple uh, friction holding like that. It holds up really good. It's not going anywhere. That's locked in right there. And that's it. Now, this one doesn't quite fit yet. I didn't adjust it all the way. See, it sits high up. So I left this one alone because I'm going to see if my Grex fits in there. And I don't know how my uh, my Barbatos airbrush is going to fit in it yet. So I'm going to leave that one alone. But, yeah, I had this adjusted for this gallery airbrush. And it's perfect. It holds the cup perfect. It's tied to the bench right there. Look at that. It's awesome. And you can move these wherever you want. So if you have the clip it on the bench this way, you just loosen this up and pull one over here. However you want to do it. I can turn it right there. So, excellent. I just got this. It was about 20 bucks, 25 bucks, Worth every penny. It's built like a tank. And it's just what I was looking for. I'll show you my other one. I don't mean to shout. I'm a little bit out of the way. There we go. This was at Harbor Freight. And I got two like this. And this is awesome, too. You can adjust any angle you want on this. This can be adjusted. These can be adjusted. Oh, come upside down. You can spin it. These can spin. So uh, it depends where you are mounted and where you have it sitting. You can adjust it any way you want. And uh, it's got the opening at the bottom again for Mac valves. Let's get a Mac valve here. There we go. And again, it'll fit up here. Now, it doesn't hold the trigger one. The trigger one will fit in here, but not up here. Um, and another bonus, it was really cheap, under 10 bucks, suction cups, it sticks right to my metal, uh, my, my spray booth is made of steel, it sticks right to the bottom, no problem at all, but uh, you can't, I have so many airbrushes, you know, I'm not going to show you this, because I use that every day, you guys drive me nuts, looking for them, and I'm looking for them myself, you can't get these things, um, I might as well go dig for gold, I'd probably find gold before I could find one of these, uh, this one was from, um, Spray Gunner, and the one with the red, here's the red, is from Hobby Mio, and you can't get either of them. So what I did was, I asked the manufacturer of my airbrush, can we make these? And I think we might be able to. So if I can manufacture these under my name, I'm going to get these out in the market so you guys can get these. Um, that's why I don't like to talk about them or say where, I say where I got them, but they're always out of stock. I will tell you where I got them, you know, Robot Kai and Spray Gunner. And uh, neither place has them in stock. They sell out in like five seconds. All right, let me put that back. All right, guys, let me see where else we are here. Uh, these were nippers, shaker, da -da, quick, da -da, cute. Oh boy, we're almost done, guys. We went through everything. Everything. Um, I use a quick connect, but I think you guys are onto that. I mean, this is again, this is something that's so basic that I don't have a real need to uh, show you guys. But I use a quick connect, and here's a moisture trap. And to say I use it every day, I mean, it's like I use this lamp every day. You know, it's, it's just part of the setup. You know, I was going to go over that, but I uh, personally don't think there's a need for that. I'm going to show you some unique stuff. And that's what we've been doing. We only have two items left to show you. And uh, one is this. I use this almost daily, at least once a week. This is the Tamiya Model Hobby Stand. And let me tell you something. This thing is a wonder. It's under 30 bucks. I think I paid 22 this has its own turntable. Look at that. This is its own turntable. It comes with all these clips. You can put the clips anywhere you want in here. 
Uh, let me see if I can get a part here. There's a gumbler piece right here. So you can put this here. So you can either you can spray if you want right here. See it? You can hold it in your hand if you want to spray it, and then put it in here to hold it. Um, I think it's it can hold. I don't know if it holds these pegs. I, I had something in here before. Yeah, you could put that in there. That'll hold that up while you spray up here. You know, and uh, it's and there's a bigger hole if you want to put something. It's just great. Now this is another part. Now I'll hold this in my hand. Let me show you what this part is. This is for cars. You know, and some and bigger. I actually put a gumpla body on this once, and this is from the uh, Cobra paint test. Uh, yeah. So I mean, and you, if it's if it's a bigger car, a smaller car, you can adjust it. Look at the adjusting here, where you spread it out so it'll stick a little better, grip a little better. There you go. And when you're done, you can put it on here. I've seen some guys go here and then spray it in the booth this way. I like to get underneath, but you can just tip it and go that route too. You know, I love this thing, particularly at the price point of twenty something bucks, low twenties, I think. I don't know what it is on Amazon. I'll put a link below, uh, whatever it is. It's absolutely, absolutely worth owning and um, a must-own, I, I think, particularly, especially if you built cars. Forget it. it. It really is a must-own. I love this thing. Um, the last thing I want to show you is my dehydrator, and I definitely use that every day. And uh, I'm going to pause the camera. We're going to go in the other room where it is, and I'll show you the dehydrator, and then, uh, then we'll wrap this up. All right, guys, we magically appeared in the other room, and uh, it looks like the other room. Nothing but models. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is my dehydrator. I've done two videos on it, a video and then an updated video. It is a wonder. I use it every single day. You just hit the button once. It flashes to 10 hours. You can adjust the time. Here's the temp. Now, you hit temperature. See, it says 158. I don't know if it shows up for you guys. Yeah, it does. There it is. And this, I like to go down. I'll go down to about 113. That's all you really need. You know, I let it go. And if you don't want to go for long, you hit the timer, go down to an hour. I've never put anything in there more than an hour. You lift it up this way, and that's it. And it comes with all of these racks. Look at this. I've never used all of them. Um, but I'll put a car body in there. I'll put all the spoons, you guys. Let me show you a spoon here. This is a test that I'm working on, the Sun and 7 test. See that? I put that in there. For, when it, when I'm done spraying them, I run in this room where I keep the tray in the other room and I bring the tray in with all the spoons on it and put it in. You know, and I'll close the lid and that's it. Come in probably 20 minutes. It's done. It's cured. We're moving on. And uh, I could do a, a paint test in real time for you guys using this while it's drying. I'm in there spraying another piece on camera. It's already dry by the time I come in here. Uh, it's not cheap at 100 bucks, but I use it so often. It's worth its weight in gold. I got a bigger size because you see how many spoons and everything I did. Everything else was just too awkward. Stuff ended up touching. I bought a smaller one, and I ended up scraping a lot of the spoons and ruining what I was doing. So I said, I'm going to just jump up to a $100 model, and it's been worth it ever since. I use it every single day. I love this thing. Um, it's got a vent in the back. I put a thin piece of uh, filter material so it doesn't blow any dust in. And uh, it doesn't hinder the fan at all. But it, it filters out a lot of dust. And it's been great. And uh, this is one of my most often used. I know for a fact I'll be using this thing as much as I'm using this light switch, turning the light on. So, uh, yeah, that's, how, uh, that's one of my favorites. So uh, let's head back to the bench and let's wrap up this test. Oh, look what we found on the way back to the uh, bench. A new waterfall spray booth. And I don't need another one, but three fans. It has a third fan. And that's the most fans of any booth I've ever tested, water or not. So we'll be testing this. It's got the uh, LED lights. And I got a new drainage system for the water. I'm going to be showing you guys when I do this test, hopefully within a week. But I'm excited to see the three fans and uh, see how efficient... It works. The other one's not bad to start with, with the dual fan, but let's see how three fans works. Anyway, let's head back to the bench. All right, my friends, here we are back at the bench, and uh, not much hot air coming out of my mouth, so look, we lowered the humidity back to 62. <laughs> that's all right. Um, anyway, that is it. That is the test. That the test. I didn't know test here. I showed you what I use. These are the products I use every day, if not once a week, at least. And... Um, 
I'll put links to everything below except for things like the lack of thinner and, you know, some basic stuff. You guys can figure that out, spoons and whatnot. I'll put a link for the black spoons because I do like these shiny spoons, so I will put a link for that. But most of the stuff, if I can get links for you guys, I'll put a link up. And um, that's all. That's it, man. Uh, please, please like and subscribe. We're going to reach that plateau of 100,000 subscribers. We just hit 80, and we're going to climb to 90. And once we reach 100, it's going to be a celebration time. As I said before, a massive giveaway. Spray booth, airbrush, uh, a compressor, uh, a set of paints, uh, kits, a nippers, uh, uh, a knife, glue. I'm going to give everything. Uh, like a, you, you can a kit. It'll be a giant box that uh, you guys can literally start the hobby off. You won't have to go to the store for anything with this giveaway we're going to do once we uh, reach that 100,000 plateau. Now, coming up, I have a test of these Titan primers. Let me show you. Oops. There's all kinds of colors with these. This is gunmetal primer. Look at that. Gunmetal primer. Isn't that awesome? Yellow, blue, big giant cans here that should last a while. And let me show you how we're going to test them. Hold on one second. It's right behind me. I don't know why I had to uh, pause the camera. Uh, I, here's how we're going to test it. I got these molds at the railroad hobby shop. See that? It's like a rock wall. And then these little rocks here. And I casted some resin. And here's what we produce. So we're going to try the primer and see how it fills in all these little cracks. And uh, I got here's the wall. We'll see how it, if it can fill in all these little gaps. I put a, a black dye in this one so we can darken it and see how the white covers this. And that's going to be the test. We're going to test all these colors and uh, see how good these primers are. Uh, I've been using them for quite a while and I do like them, but I didn't get all the colors. So once I got all the colors and I figured we'd go ahead and test them. But also coming up, is the test of the Vallejo model Game Air, a Game Air, and uh, I got the whole lineup of new formula. Hold on, uh, there's a whole bunch here. I can't grab them. You saw the picture. Anyway, um, these just came out. It's a new formula. It's supposed to cover better, more durable, uh, better pigments, and uh, I did. I like the originals. These are really good acrylic airbrush paints, uh, the best probably. But to know that they made it better, I'm dying to find out, and. Uh, I did spray one spoon. I'll give you a sneak peek. I should wait for the video. I took the green here and uh, look at how even and beautiful this painted. Uh, I didn't thin it at all. I wanted to try it straight out of the uh, jar. So there's a sneak peek. We're going to test every color that came in. And uh, oh, this is going to be a biggie. Uh, I really like this lineup. I'm not an acrylic guy, but I do like this, this lineup of paint. Uh, definitely. So that is coming up. Anyway, man, subscribe and uh, please uh, like the video and hit the uh, notification bell so you know when this video goes up or the Titan Primer Test goes up. You'll get a notification. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell them to please subscribe so we can reach that plateau. It's just uh, at this point it's becoming a dream of mine, but I think we can make it. We're doing really good lately, and you guys have been absolutely the best. Consider my Patreon, too. I'll put a link below for that. As I said, I will put links to everything we tested here. And uh, if you don't see a link or it's dead, ask me, and I'll send it to you directly. Anyway, guys, that is it. That's everything I use on a daily or weekly basis. Any questions, feel free to ask. Have a great weekend, which is coming up very soon. And, uh, yeah, we will see you in the next video.